Now then, this next hymn, titled in the form of a question, certainly this, I've asked myself this question many, many times because, well, you know my past, Bob, and you know how I've been, how I used to be, and what I am now. I'll never know. I guess this side of heaven, why the Lord seen fit to save a wretch like me and then give me this place of responsibility that I have. God's certainly been good to us, and I just can't understand why. And I know that because he loved me, that he did it. So this song, again, is my personal testimony. Love sent my Savior to die in my sin. Why should he love me so? Meekly to Calvary's cross he was led. Why should he love me so? bit, because I know that you'd be anxious to hear some of God's words, I want to speak to you on the three I will of the Lord. There are three times in the Bible that the Lord Jesus said, I will, and I want to call your attention to those three times and think about it just a little bit. First of all, in Matthew, the 16th chapter, in verses 13 through 18, we hear Jesus as he speaks to his disciples and says these words. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, did you notice the I will in that verse of Scripture? Now, Jesus said here that, that he was going to build his church. I will build my church. Now then, uh, he didn't say that Peter was going to build the church. He didn't say that his disciples would later build the church. He didn't say that the church would come into existence on the day of Pentecost, as some people teach. But he said that he himself would build his church. Now, I believe that the Bible teaches that the Lord Jesus himself built the church. He established the church when he was on this earth in a physical body. He built the church. And not only did he build it, but we also know that the Lord Jesus commissioned the church. He gave to it the great commission that we've heard preached upon so many, many times. When he said in the Matthew, the 28th chapter, Go into all the world 
and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe or to do all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. You know, sometimes I believe that the church is guilty of failing to realize that it was to them that the Great Commission was given. And somehow I am persuaded to believe also that the church has many times forgotten what the main business of the church ought to be. It's given to us very clearly in the Great Commission that the, 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 the purpose of the church is to make disciples, win people to Christ, and to baptize them, and then to teach them to live a Christian life and to be able to serve the Lord Jesus. Sometimes I ask the people where I preach, what is a Christian? Uh, I suppose that if I were to ask a half a dozen different folk that I meet on the street what a Christian is, I'd get a, a number of different answers. Some people would say, well, I think that a Christian is a person who has joined the church or one who has been baptized or one who has done numerous other things. But to sum it up, or in a nutshell, this is what a Christian is. A Christian is a follower of Christ. You recall that in the, in the Bible, in the book of Acts, I think it's the 11th chapter, it uh, tells us there that the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now, why were they called Christians first at Antioch? Well, they were called Christians because they were living like Christ. The people who looked at them, the people who watched them, could see that they were Christ-like in their nature. They were living and talking and working and doing the things that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, wanted them to do. I believe as Christians that you and I today ought to have the same purpose in life that the Lord Jesus Christ had. And perhaps uh, sometimes we lose sight of what the purpose that Jesus had for giving up all the glory and splendor of heaven and come down to this uh, old earth. He told us what he came for in Luke the 19th chapter in verse 10 when he said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save. The all-consuming desire of the Lord Jesus was to seek out those that were lost and, and win him unto himself. And so I believe that that we as Christian people, that you and that I should make it my business to, to win people to Christ, to lead people to Christ, to seek those who are lost, who do not know Jesus as their Savior, and then introduce them to Jesus, whom to know is to have life. Jesus said on another occasion, Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I have commanded you. And I know that I wouldn't have to remind you that, that Jesus has commanded us to go out and win people for him. One place he said, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house might be filled. And so we need to remember that as a part of the church, now I don't mean the Baptist Church or the United Brethren Church or the Methodist Church, but I mean a part of the church of the Lord Jesus. We as members of his body need to always be conscious of this one thing, that we're in the biggest business in the world. There's no business in the world uh, larger or greater than the business of working for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, soul winning, I believe, and that's why I'm in it, soul winning should be the business of life <coughs> with every Christian. We ought, to, we ought to be busy continually in this matter of leading lost people to Christ. Now then, the second I will, and I'm going to have to hurry because our tape is just about gone, is found in John the 16th chapter and uh, verses 7 and 8. And here it is that Jesus has promised to send the Holy Spirit. He said, nevertheless, in verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, is expedient for you that I go away. For I, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. 
And so we have here the promise that the Lord Jesus would send his Holy Spirit and we need to be dependent upon him. We need to let the Holy Spirit lead us day by day. And I think we're guilty of taking things out of the hand of God and trying to do things in our own strength. But we need to be led by his precious spirit. And then the last I will that I call your attention to is found also in the book of John, in the first few verses of John, the 14th chapter, when Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. He said, I will come again. And so, Mom, I, I want you and the girls and those who might listen to this recording to remember that Jesus Christ is coming again. In First Thessalonians it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive remain to the end shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And so Jesus is coming again. Oh, we need to live yeah, a life of expectancy. We need to live every moment like we were expecting Jesus to come at that very moment. My, my, my time's gone. The tape's gone. And I'm going to have to say goodbye. I hope that you enjoy this and write and tell me all about it. If you do, and uh, if you like it, why, maybe you could send this roll back to me and later on and I'll make another recording somewhere else and send it to you. So goodbye and Lord bless you until I see you again.